walking could be described as a series of rhythmical collision and push off. Um, historically, we looked at the gait of, of people like normal person or a pathological gait like an amputee case by dividing it into a swing phase, which is a phase that the flight phase and the swinging of the leg takes place, and the stance phase, which is where the loading phase takes place. This is the first uh, modular limb prosthesis, modular assembly prosthesis called MAP system, which was the first application of engineering into prosthetics, where you have an above knee unit which has got a knee control, a conventional um, or, or a metallic carrier and a knee control for the swing control of the activities of the knee. So this means that you can control how fast the leg swings forward and thus make the gait a bit more natural? Exactly. You can also set it up to the individual. So you could actually set the swing characteristics of how far the heel rises and how fast the limb will actually straighten up to the specific needs of the person. By simple adjustment of this pneumatic cylinder, you could adjust the knee brakes in terms of the amount of weight they put on it to be able to get the stability. If I just show you three types of ankles, um, the three elements of the ankle, one is the ankle joint itself, which can actually provide a degree of motion. Then we have the toe springs, which provides the energy absorbing part of the foot in terms of the push-off phase. And then we have the heel part, which is effectively the shock absorbing part of the foot action in terms of the collision of the foot to the ground. Well, moving away from a condition that where you had a solid ankle to an elastic ankle, which provided a range of motion, but under elastic control, what we wanted is to be able to mimic the muscle action. And the muscle action is if you can visualize a rope, which is effectively can be have a controlled rate of extension, it will be a muscle action. And if you were going to model a muscle, which is, has got a control rate of extension, is essentially I've got a spring and a dashboard. So, so essentially um, like a damper on a car. Exactly, very much like that. So what we wanted to do was to be able to have elastic parts of the ankle replaced with a damping characteristic Hence, we created a dashboard, which effectively can damp all the forces which is created and be able to provide different rate of motion. The spring element was the same, that we had the carbon fiber cantilever spring, and combining the two together, we have the creation of the echelon. So here's an echelon foot, I guess. Yes, and that is where we have created a ankle which is capable of providing about nine degrees of motion with a circular piston which effectively can provide six degrees of what we call plantar flexion or the foot flat position and three degrees of dorsiflexion when the toe can actually come up. Combined with 12 degrees of the deflection we get from the heel spring we have now got the complete range of the plantar flexion required for an ana ana anatomical motion in, the, in terms of the amputee gait. So although my ankle can move a lot more than that sort of 15 degrees, um, which you're getting on this um, joint here, yeah. when you add that to the springs, that comes up to something similar to a conventional foot? Very much so. So we have got the toe spring that we can actually create about 20 degrees to 22 degrees of deflection. At the 3 degrees, you get the 25 degrees, which is a normal ankle motion for normal, normal activity like uh, such as walking. I've been an amputee since 2006, about five years, because when you first start as an amputee, there's lots of changes in your stump and they have to do new sockets and they haven't decided fully on your activity level, as neither have you yourself. You're not sure what you can do or even want to do, perhaps. So I had a hydraulic knee, a fixed ankle, um, and I've since moved on to another alternative hydraulic knee that's um, more advanced and suits my style of walking and my sort of pace of life, I guess. 
before I used to find it very difficult just to stand still on a slope um, because I used to be balancing almost totally on my sound side um, which is not good for the sound side because I'm putting lots of effort through that it's much more tiring and it's uncomfortable to be honest with you um, so you you don't learn to actually walk down a slope you learn to trick your way down a slope um, it's it's certainly not called walking the way I used to do it anyway so the fact that something came around that enabled me to walk down a slope without having to even think about it ultimately was just hugely different hugely so you're standing on the slope with a flexible ankle so how's that working um, well, it's helping me to stand securely, um, evenly loaded on the sound side and on the prosthetic side. So I'm feeling secure. I can stand upright and um, stand here talking to you, which is great if you're walking down the slope with your friends. Um, and then you just will walk down and just keep going. And you don't have to consider what you're doing too much. But with a rigid ankle, you'd be thinking about that all the time. Yeah, it's, it's a major consideration for all amputees and myself as well that you end up scanning the floor. Um, you look a long way in front to see if there's a slope, if there's an alternative way of going, walking around without having to use the slope, and if necessary, you're avoiding it altogether. So it's, um, and also you're just walking along looking at the floor. Who wants to do that?